go to wgbh.org to grab your tickets. Good evening. This is Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Thank you for tuning in. Um, tonight, I'm going to continue what I talked about last week, still about the duality of this uh, universe, and that how uh, gradually the patriarchal society steal away the duality and make everything into a mono. Uh, belief system okay and as long as there is only one and being male and then it create a lot of uh, inequality in our society for thousands of years and I'm going to start with my slide and if I'm right this is my 54th episode and if I'm going very fast which I have to because I have only 27 minutes to do the whole thing and I want to present you a complete idea every time which I don't always succeed so please type my program name basket starfish uh, in the YouTube and you can watch all the past episodes okay and I will start uh, now uh, with the slide hi okay this is the basket starfish and I want you to, uh, to show you uh, that uh, this is what I mean that we all share one common core every single language you know what they call a family tree is nothing but a branch from the same system okay Okay, so uh, I propose that uh, we are not separate uh, tree families and because uh, the belief of that, you know, you have big tree, small tree or whatever, and earlier tree, later tree, so that it actually in human hierarchy and then it also leads us to believe the purity of anything because uh, I don't want um, we to believe more and more in this purity of lineage or purity of anything. So uh, uh, as long as we believe in that it Asian human hierarchy so I think it needs to be changed I present to you a female uh, point of view from Asia and it is not the normal academic view because I have been traveling you know for more than 30 years more than 20 of them you know I concentrate in uh, bringing together all the commonality between languages so um, this is what I found and okay tonight's theme is to, to show you there is no single entity and even the word single is not really single. I want you to pay attention to this sin right there. You can look at it as the S-Y-N in the Greek, uh, you know, language, like joining things together, okay? And there is no pure language, no pure lineage, and no pure ethnicity, okay? Uh, this, uh, all this pure lineage is only invented by the pat patriarchs, I mean, not, sorry, the patriarchs. And then they want you to uh, stick to their line and and then uh, it limits all the female activity all along in these thousands of years, okay? So um, I will go back again to show you how concept slowly mutated or was actually manipulated, you know, slowly. At the beginning, of course, you know, uh, as a naive human being, you will understand that the creation is by birth, which is a matriarchal society because the way to create someone new is by giving birth, right? And I'll show Show you these are real Chinese writing and then this one you know we look at it as the fountain in Chinese and also we understand it as the thread and of course use the umbilical cord right so you and this you see this T with things dripping down but you can actually use it for male and female because uh, at the same time we found this, uh, another uh, symbol showing you know the the male part also as a T shape right there okay so uh, or at least you know it shows a very parallel parallel parental society and uh, the word parent, uh, parental is actually come from the Latin word par. Par is actually the English pair. So it always comes in pair, not just one. Okay. So, but the Sumerian uh, simplify everything. It's just a T. This, uh, as uh, according to their uh, writing explanation, they say that this is uh, uh, the ability, the cosmic, uh, that enable cosmic activity. So you can understand it in a metaphysical level. And of course, you know, it will gradually lead you to religious belief, you know, thinking that you know something is falling from heaven or dripping down from heaven and uh, but the more simple a symbol is the more easily it can be manipulated okay so uh, gradually um, we also created the world you know uh, everything is 
kind of created by words by the but fathers okay so even the Chinese have the same thing instead of this a little bit complicated T right there it becomes simplified and for us you know it is all uh, it holds all different consonants it can be read in different sounds but basically it's always about a uh, breath and something coming out from from above and also about word okay and then um, gradually you know you can see that you know the thing gets curved more and more curved as I said this becomes you know the Tibetan way of showing all the uh, uh, manuscript whenever there is a divine authority speaking you will see this breath uh, like a wind like a breath coming out before they start any writing okay and of course the Chinese also maintain another system uh, but these few uh, things become a determinative in Chinese and then it has the sound of Lai as I already explained last week you can go back to the 53rd episode so to look at it and it actually uh, become the law as you understood in the West you know the law is uh, by God okay so by this time you know it's by already monopolized by a male you know the world all this creation is no longer an, an equal world uh, shared by the parent by the male and the female it gradually shifted to the male dominated society okay so um, once again I want to show you how did we begin to have this this idea about the decree the command from heaven first of all you see this uh, in Sumerian writing and then um, this one is also Chinese you know as I said you know we understood as like some kind of ritual and that is uh, we have to follow uh, to uh, worship the sky and then um, this few you know uh, this is Chinese Chinese and this is the last one is the hieroglyph and it gradually uh, holds on like the wind itself and of course the wind becomes the word and the word becomes the verb so that's why the W and the V is always so close and the word itself is by uh, is there already an action so it becomes our verb okay so um, uh, and after this these are all real writing now these two are Arabic the R in Arabic the W in Arabic the PH in Greek and then the P or the F in uh, Hebrew and this is also the F in Arabic so as you can see if you write them with your hand it's always a circle okay and this all um, if you um, spent, if you speak any of these languages, you will see that this fa, ba, ba, uh, pa, it has everything to do with the mouth, the breath, and also the action, okay? So in Chinese, I show you again these all these symbols, you know, it becomes the law that coming from heaven. And then I will show you this Tibetan sign of the beginning of any manuscript. And I will show you the first, you know, uh, verse of the Genesis, okay? And it, the, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. You will see that how God created the earth is by speaking, okay? Other than the spirit of God was hovering and God said, you know, let there be light there was light so if I change it into Tibetan writing these are the Tibetan quotation mark okay it's as if the male God said let there be light and there was light so there is no uh, and of course you know he also uh, give life to all the creatures so it's everything created by just speaking it no longer by giving birth okay so this uh, power of birth you know is actually uh, be, being you know uh, very Fight, you know as a as an evil thing gradually as time went by but you can see that at the very beginning is just by simple simply manipulating a few signs right there from the liquid from the uh, falling down from the worm it can become you know the the word you know from heaven so this is how things were changed thousands of years ago and I'll show you again how the power was transferred in some very concrete writing so this is hieroglyph and um, this is uh, the consonant that has to do with giving birth so you will see these three lines you know just, just like the flow are very very important since ancient time and you will see that these whole bunch are Chinese writing you will see that they are actually basically almost the same you know so you can also look at this child as the sign of Ang life itself and and it's, it's very interesting that thousands of miles apart and thousands of years apart how can 
and we have things so similar if we think you know follow from a very very same original core right so um, we have this song as Mo as mother you can see we uh, put some exaggeration on the breast and this one you know we have the um, end sound you know uh, concentrate on it you have to understand in real life M and N both a nasal sound they can actually interchange with each other easily uh, it's very difficult to show you in theory but if you travel from country to country you will hear people's word change in very easily if it's an M it can very change easily change into an N okay so but uh, um, in China you know since we are not limited by alphabet they are just looking at this uh, word itself and um, in Chinese in Cantonese I can pronounce it as no and na and of course you know in uh, Arabic you can still have Nisa and you can st have still a lot of N sound you know for the female and then uh, it, within the Chinese you know we have at least 20 different pronunciation in different region as dialect one of them is this one and look at that this is the Sumerian the sound according to Sumeriologist just uh, Nin okay so you can see but the meaning is actually exactly the same this is the female this is a lady okay and of course they draw it out very clearly the um, the, the vagina of a female and gradually in Sumerian they also use the same word and same sound they change it to mean lord and master all of a sudden all this female word become a male word but no one actually tells you that a lord has to be a male right but somehow we were trained after thousands of years we do understand master you know as a male and lord as a male but at the ancient time you know not necessarily and of course you know if they stay in the pictorial a stage you know it it's not easy to confuse people because you can see very easily it's still the vagina right there but then when it changed to alphabet you know when the the words are no longer in this pictorial form you will just believe whatever the patriarchs are telling you so all these uh, leaders become male in uh, uh, themselves okay so but something still stay uh, when you say miss you see this is the ancient sound you know uh, belonging to the, um, the birth ability of the female is still miss okay up to this day miss is still in English and there's still a female okay so um, if you look at the Chinese word the mo right there or the mao right there it's a equivalent to another word mo okay so if this is an equivalent in ancient Chinese so that means you know a female can be the leader of the herd as you can see very clearly but um, it shows a very very strong female power right there the same way I'll show you another Chinese word like this the Chinese sometimes use this like a bowl shaped thing to mean the worm it basically you can understand that the vagina the same as this this is exactly like what you see the picture of the ancient uh, Greek goddess Hera you know who's holding a staff and who's always holding a bow the bow is the representation of the worm you know the life-giving bow okay so this word itself you know actually um, means guan or guan has the sound of guan or guan I mean so uh, for the people in the south in Hong Kong we speak Cantonese it still means uh, carry the, 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 the tongue of a female ruler okay but in the dictionary in China it's already moved all the way to male um, the female sense is no longer stay in the dictionary but if you go to Hong Kong you know when we say Guan it is still a female name by itself okay so as I said you know uh, we share uh, the very very common core since ancient time I compare this Guan sound with the old English Quen and then gradually become the Queen which is true because the only the legitimate female ruler can be called a queen it is not the wife of a king okay this is of someone of the royal blood okay so well, after all these are all the exaggeration of the female power that the West you know did a lot to to cover up okay and also if you compare this the leader of the herd uh, as uh, you see in Chinese you 
uh, we understand it also as a female uh, can be a female I mean but in the West you know you will see that you know in ancient Hebrew they use this two sign you know of course it's a leader of the herd again you know uh, and gradually when it changes it become an A become an L okay and this is how the uh, the word Elohim comes by at the beginning as you can see it's still Elohim the Im is the Hebrew uh, suffix you know for a dual uh, entity okay but gradually you know people will uh, try to understand it's just all a single entity of course gradually as time go uh, went by um, closer closer to our age when you say L when you say Allah it's all just a one single entity male all the remnant of the female entity has completely vanished at with time so you will see the power slowly transfer completely from the female to the male okay so uh, again you know the birth as creation so this is the Chinese word very clearly uh, the, has the same sound this is me this is me and, and and we definitely this is a female sign and this can be a male or female but this is an ambiguous Sumerian sign saying that is the ability to give life and I will show you that the T right there the, what we know about the T is gradually become what we know as a stellar in Greek a stellar is what is standing okay that's why the T is so very very uh, interesting linking to something that stands you know and also linking to the word totem and I will see, show you the earliest totem it was a female this uh, you can fa be found you know in the archaeological find in Turkey more than 10,000 years ago it is something standing you know the earliest you know st stellar that human being made is nothing but a female you will see that hold is very very important it is a female holding another female which holding another hold so it is like uh, you know giving different generation giving birth right right so this is also from Turkey and you will see that a bigger uh, figure is holding another smaller figure the hand is going all the uh, way to the vagina the vagina give another baby another baby give another baby I remember I also see this kind of totem also in Indonesia and of course you know some of the Indians also this have the same kind of totem it's all about the glorification of the birth ability or in creation okay so but gradually um, this become more and more abstract uh, sometimes you think abstraction come first but in this case you will get and actually see that people actually do do things the reverse order before that things are actually more concrete form but they want to confuse things they may think they make things more uh, more abstract so this is more than 12,000 years this become a t-shape you can still all this you know living uh, creatures coming out coming down like this but they didn't tell you that whenever the temple is you will see that this 12,000 year old temple always have two of this t-shaped you know standing inside so they were still worshiping you know a duality not a single t-shape okay so again these are the uh, this is the Sumerian earliest pictograph it means the being or the divine property that enable cosmic activity that means that enable life okay so these three are Chinese form as I said you know we we uh, limit them you know to use in the ritual purpose it's really things coming down you can look at it as liquid you can look at it as something flowing down but somehow you know uh, the ancient Chinese still insist in putting somehow two lines right there to uh, to enforce that duality instead of the single one line okay so um, this is the, the, the also Chinese this is what we understand as the thread and again I'll show you the Turkish finding you know um, can you imagine they can carve all these animals so well why didn't they carve the the entity as a male or female they didn't because this was the period they tried to confuse things 
by making the abstraction of a T because without showing the uh, the gender of this they can easily teach it uh, slowly slowly from the female gender to change this T into the male gender in, pe in people's head but you can look at it carefully you know by this uh, all these things are coming down on the side but if you look at these carefully you will still see this line coming down like this these are the symbol like this the breaking apart I, I have shown you in my last two episodes and this this is the H you know as the umbilical cord and this is also why all the ancient uh, cultures you know have our braided hair to show our continuous line this is how we show with our hope for continuation so you will see that uh, as I said you know the T gradually change you know then they boldly begin to express it as a male okay so um, you will see that this is an ancient hieroglyph you know this is also connected uh, with the tail okay connect with the birth okay so um, by this time the male uh, gradually you know they wear a tail like that of course this is a signification of their own uh, uh, penis okay so this is uh, the way of a long uh, long, how do you say it? Long clothes, and then of course there's a signification of their 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 penis, and of as I said before, the tail. You know, it was for a long time had been a very important sign. You know, for giving birth, and gradually as the uh, ancient Egyptian changed this, you know, into the sound of an app. You, you see app if you speak Arabic if you speak Hebrew or you speak a lot of the Eastern language you will say you will know that Abba Abba Ab, all this belong to father okay so that's why later on they begin to carve human shape again by this time you know the female shape completely disappear and all this you know the three lines you know which belongs to the female be, uh, shifted slowly to the exaggeration of the male part okay this is how you know the um, equal part uh, sharing by female and the male uh, took over by the male gender only okay so it begins the lineage of God and this God become just male and many thousand years ago you know still you know in the Chinese you know this is the, the uh, statue of the Buddhist sativa and about a thousand years ago, you a thousand years ago, and then uh, you will see that you know this three line are still very very important. This is the line that shows that this is the uh, sacred lineage, the the divine lineage, and you will see that the Chinese word like this as also manipulated by the ancient Chinese uh, emperor. The um, I will pay. I will show you this sign. You will compare. To, this to ancient Hebrew. This is the ancient Hebrew H, okay, which has a lot to do with the thread. And you will see that, you know, it also appeared in the Chinese ancient writing more than 3,500 years ago. And um, what does it tell? It says that uh, the uh, ancient emperor actually used the word to present I. It is a pronoun of the ancient emperor, monopolized by the first emperor of China. And uh, from then on, you know, Know, even the sound was not allowed it to be said by common people so the sound is somehow lost somehow and then uh, because from that on you know the man-made thread as marker was used instead of the natural umbilical cord because you know the lineage is no longer followed by the mother but like it or not you know we uh, in Chinese history we wrote down in our history very clearly that at the beginning it was a matrilineal lin uh, lineage and also of course if you know the Jewish culture, you will know that the Jews also follow a matrilineal line. And if your mother is a Jew, you are a Jew. If your mother, if your father is a, a, a Jew, but your mother is not a Jew, you are still not a Jew. Okay. So um, I will show you the first emperor from then on. All the aristocratic family, saying that they have a lineage to God, will wear a line like this. Of course, you, again, you will see the splitting sign exactly like what you saw in the ancient uh, Turkish you know statue and you will see that uh, from then on all the male were wearing this line you know to show their lineage and this are the picture of the present Jewish people and they are also wearing this line to show their to, 
to their uh, lineage to God. Of course, they didn't say it's lineage. They actually see that they, they it is their contract to God. So somehow it is uh, legitimized their own linkage to God rather to a male God, I would say, rather than the female's uh, uh, power, okay? So again you will see that you know if the male you know started this lineage to god uh, all this line you know begins you know and it's an act of exclusion because you know it starts uh, uh your hierarchy and also create a lot of caste system from then on and these two are the ancient greek the h sign you can use it to 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 link something you can also use it to bar something as a hedge okay so i will show you also this this is a chinese sin and sin and sim sound okay which is to do with the line. This is seen in, in uh, sound, you know, in ancient Egyptian hieroglyph, look at this. And this is S in ancient Arabic in Yemen, ancient writing in Yemen, all this, you can understand it as a thread. And look at this, this is a polo at the early time. And then look at this line right there. It is adopted by all the uh, European royalty. They said they are linked to the ancient blue blood, you know, the, the lineage. And this is how they treat themselves differently they think they themselves are different and to the east you know they were doing the same you know all the uh, the Indian uh, families you know were doing the same thing but this actually after the men started to do this they, they limited all this to the priest family and then these are the Brahmin and then of course it started this caste system which creates so much trouble for the human world okay so but luckily you know one way positively we inherit this we are still wearing this ribbon to show our synchrony and symphony okay so I will show uh, okay so um, I am actually prepared a lot more than I think I can uh, do but uh, I want you to swallow those slowly because it's a little bit too much for you uh, but I want you to understand that you know it was thousand years of making that uh, the power was gradually transferred from the uh, female to the male I'm not a feminist I'm not advocating for the female only I'm just saying that we need to create an equal world so that we can be more human okay uh, type the name in